Hello, so I'm going to, today I'm going to be teaching you how to solve problem number five on problem set number eight. Uh, there's many methods of doing this. The way that I'm going to do it is by using torque. So, here we've re we recognize that there are two forces that are perpendicular to the radius. There are two there's two perpendicular forces which, which are providing some torque on this wheel here. Right? So, the first thing we want to do is find the forces, right, which we know that the force of this and the force of this are, are both going to be mg. So this is 0.5 kilograms times 10 meters per second squared. We're going to give you 5 newtons, and on this one it's going to give you 15 newtons. We've already solved that part for you. You can do that if not all that hard. Now, as far as the torques, so we know that the torque that this one supplies on it is going to be equal to, let's go ahead and call it torque 1, it's going to be equal to the force, the cross force times the radius, right? So we know the force is 5 newtons, and we know that it's a perpendicular force, because it's a perpendicular force, you can see that, it's, it's pretty evident, so it's a perpendicular force times the radius, of this smaller wheel here, which is 0 0.15 meters. Okay? And then the second torque is going to be the same thing. The force of gravity, which is different this time, this time it's 15 newtons, times the radius. Also, we should recognize that these are, are providing a torque in opposite directions. So we can, we can choose which direction is positive or negative. I'm going to go ahead and call this one negative torque and this one a positive torque. So, so negative down positive. This is going to give you uh, negative 0.75 newton meters. And this one should give you 2.25 newton meters. So three quarters of a meter and two and a quarter newton meters. Sorry about that. So we know the sum sigma of the torques is going to equal. 2.25 newton meters minus 0 0.75 newton meters. And so the sum of the torques is going to equal 1.5 newton meters. Okay? So the next step <laughs> is we recognize that torque is equal to the moment of inertia times the rotational acceleration, alpha. So the problem is asking for alpha. We know the sum of the torques now. However, we, do, we have yet to calculate the moment of inertia. So since this is a solid disk, it's pretty straightforward. The moment of inertia I, I'll go ahead and do that down here. Moment of inertia I is equal to one half the mass, which is 2 kilograms, times the radius, which is 0.4 meters, squared. It's as simple as that. So what we can do is we can just plug this value in, or we could solve for it. It's going to be these two values will just cancel out. So the moment of inertia is going to equal 0.16, that would be kilograms meter squared. Okay, so now that we know the sum of the torques and the moment of inertia, we can solve for alpha. So now we know alpha is equal to the torque over the moment of inertia. 
We know some of the torques, which is 1.5 newton meters over 0.16 kilograms times meters squared. So you could do this, you could do the units if you like, they would cancel out and leave you with 9.4 per second squared, which is just going to be radians per second squared. 